Previously on the Ron Van Dam Show. Oh, I found Jesus. This is a special day. And as fascinating as that is, I'm like an apartment building where you have to buzz to come upstairs on the intercom. And now, today's episode. On the air everywhere, this is New England Broadcasting. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good night. It's the Ron Van Dam Show. Wow, that's great. Hold on tight, things can get a bit weird, if you like that sort of thing. I think I was like two years old. The first memory I have as a child is uh, my parents took me in the car to a public place. I think it was a supermarket or something. And it was the first time I realized, hey, there are other human beings on the planet besides me and my parents. It blew my mind. I had no idea. My immediate reaction was, what the hell? What the hell? What's with all these people here? And then I found out the entire world is filled with people from all different countries. What? That wasn't the deal. I don't understand Swiss cheese. My reaction to Swiss cheese is uh, like the cheeses. Oh, I said cheeses by mistake. My reaction to Swiss cheese is where's the rest of my cheese? Why are they selling me cheese that has holes in it? I'm not buying that much cheese. Same thing with donuts. It's like, where's the middle part? Oh, we sell that separately. What do you mean you sell it separately? So, give me the whole thing. If I don't want to eat the middle, that's my choice. Don't give me something with no middle in it. It's just a big hole. Give me the whole, give me the thing. Give me the hole too. What the hell's wrong with you? I like that expression uh, to find out if you're an optimist or a pessimist. Is the glass half empty or half full? Well, I don't know, but where's the rest of my liquid? Fill it up! Come on! Be so cheap! Sometimes I look at carpeted floors, you know, like a bedroom where it's carpeted. And I'm wondering, like, did you just carpet that room because the floor underneath is all screwed up? Is that are you covering something up with carpet? No, no, Ron, it's it's to make your, your feet nice and comfortable. No, it's not. The floors the floor's all messed up. You put carpet on top because the floor's messed up. If the floor was really nice, that would be nice hardwood. You wouldn't be carpeting over it. No, Ron, not every floor has hardwood. Shut up. Trying to pull that wool over my eyes. I went to his... Hi, by the way. (laughs) Oh, 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 hi. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I didn't know you were here. (laughs) I went to a supermarket, a supermarket yesterday, and uh, as soon as I walked in, you know, they, they, they put their things on sale, like, as soon as you walk into the supermarket, so you can be enticed to buy something, at least. 
So I walk in there in this gigantic uh, display case, and on it are bags of blood oranges. And my immediate reaction was, ew, that's disgusting. <laughs> Ech, what the hell's a blood orange? Now, I know what a blood orange is, but I'm usually not confronted by it when I walk into a store. It really turned me off, man. I was really hungry. I was going to buy a lot of food. Then I see this this display of bags of blood oranges with a big sign, blood oranges. Whoa, ew. That's disgusting. You realize that inside my body, I've got blood flowing. And when I see blood, it's not like, hmm, that looks tasty. Yeah, mm, what a horrible concept that is. Now, I know there's not real blood in these oranges, but that's not a tasty description of an orange. Ugh. And then there's blood sausage. That's even more disgusting. Because that does involve blood. Ugh. I mean, there's not blood in it, but there was stuff that had blood in it before they killed it and stuffed it in someone's intestines. That's another disgusting food. Sausages. Ew. That's ground up something. Ground up meat. Ground up Bob. It could be Bob. I don't know. Ground up meat. All different kinds of animals thrown in there. <laughs> what's inside the sausage? Well, what do you care? What do you care? What's a, you, it's, what do you care? You can't distinguish what it is anyway. What do you care? They should call it what do you care sausages. They stuff things, meat from all different things, into someone's intestine. Oh, oh. But they're so tasty with onions and peppers. I don't, I don't know what I'm eating. I have no idea. Are you enjoying that uh, sausage with onions and peppers, Ron? Yes, it's very, very good. What is it? I don't know. I, I don't know. What's in the sausage, Ron? I don't know. But you're eating it. I know. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's in it. I have no idea. I don't know who it is. Yeah, that's a problem. Uh, you imagine, uh, oh my God, uh, but tasty. I mean, there are entire countries that love their sausages. I mean, uh, Germany and and uh, Lithuania and all those sausage countries <laughs> where they have sausages, where they're known for stuffing meat into someone's intestines. Whew, wow. Who came up with that idea? Had to be a real rainy day. When someone said, hey, I got a great food idea. Here's what we're going to do. Chop up some animals, stuff them in somebody's intestine, sell them in packages of six. Wow, that's an incredible idea. This, is, this could be big. Yes, it could be big. <laughs> well, we're sick of eating blood oranges, so let's, let's do this. I don't know what that is. I, I, I don't know why they would come up with that. Uh, let's chop up some meat. What do you want to stuff it in? You want to put it in a pie shell? No, 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 no. Uh, want to put it in a plastic cup? No, no. Hey, here's an idea. Stuff it inside somebody's intestines. <gasps> That's a fantastic idea. They'll love it. Oh, no, 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 no. Did you ever have cow tongue? They just call it tongue. When I was growing up, my mother thought this was a wonderful dinner idea. She went to the butcher. We had butchers back then. You don't have them now. A separate store for buying meat. It's not a lot of them around. <laughs> They're really not. You go into this place, there'd be sawdust all over the floor. I could never figure out why. <laughs> Why Why are you putting sawdust on the floor in a butcher shop? Why is that the only place you walk in and there's sawdust all over the floor? Maybe it's because they, uh, maybe the original butcher shop shared it with a carpenter and the carpenter never cleaned the floor up. I, I, I don't know why there's sawdust all over a butcher shop floor. 
See, you millennials don't know what I'm talking about. You don't know what a butcher shop is. You have no idea why they put sawdust. Oh, I don't either, actually. <laughs> but you, you never walked into a place where there was sawdust all over the floor. It, it made no sense. <sighs> God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So my mother used to go into these butcher shops, and she would ask them for, like, a pound of tongue. And uh, I thought my mother was just, like, oversexed for some reason. Hey, I'm a little horny today. Your husband ain't giving it to me. Give me some tongue. All right. All right. Thank God I put sawdust on the floor. <laughs> I don't understand what any of this means. I guess what they do is when they chop up a cow and stuff it in intestines, they say, well, what are we going to do with this gigantic tongue from the cow? Let's sell it to people. They'll eat it. And they did. It was called tongue. And my mother used to buy this. It was literally a tongue. And she would put it in a pan at 350 degrees. She put everything in a pan and shoved it in the oven at 350 degrees. Everything. I mean everything. She put my grandfather in a pan and put him in the oven at 350 degrees. And he was tasty. I think I've told this story before, but I'll tell it again <laughs> because I can't remember if I told it before. And if I did, I'm sure you can't remember hearing it. It was a sad day in the Van Dam household. My uh, grandfather had passed away of some horrible liver disease. And uh, we went to the funeral and, and the casket thing and the whole bed and there he is and uh, with his diseased liver, but you can't see the liver. Obviously, it's inside his body. And then uh, we went home that night. And my mother was uh, wearing black, which she wore anyway. And uh, he's wearing black, and she says, well, I'm going to prepare dinner for us. And I go, oh, my God, okay, Mom, are you all right? Yes, it's my father's best, uh, but I'll prepare dinner for you. And she does, and and uh, we sit down at the kitchen table, and and uh, she's feeling a little bit better, I guess. I don't know. And she puts the plates in front of all of us, and on the plate is uh, some green beans, some mashed potatoes, and next to it, a slab of liver. And I was only a child, but I was smart enough to say to myself, oh, my God, my mom is, is, is serving me liver <laughs> a few days after my grandfather passes away from, from a liver disease. I mean, <laughs> and my immediate reaction was, Grandpa, God, my mother, my mother will cook anything. It's like it's like her father died, and 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 the funeral uh, parlor director said, "What do you want to do with the diseased liver? Wrap it up, Joe. Wrap it up. I'll take it home and we'll have it for dinner." <laughs> I, I don't know. I don't think it was my grandfather's liver, but I don't know. Did you ever have liver? Did you ever eat liver? It's a very interesting taste. You can't eat it without onions on it. That's how bad liver is. You can't eat liver without something covering it up. And the thought back then when I was growing up that eating organ meat made you very healthy. It was healthy to eat the organs of people and animals. I don't know. I just remember there was this movie where there was a small plane crash and there were some athletes on the plane and they crashed somewhere in the Andes, some uh, some mountain range somewhere in the freezing cold and they had no food. Uh, these plane crash survivors in the mountains and the only way they could survive was to start eating each other, which is kind of counterproductive when you're trying to survive. <laughs> All right, what's for dinner? Bob. We're going to eat Bob today. I don't want to eat Bob. Why not? He doesn't look tasty. We got onions. Don't worry about it. We got onions. Okay. All right. 
That will make Bob very palatable. We'll eat Bob then. What are you going to have tomorrow night? Sid. We're eating Sid tomorrow night. Oh, great. That sounds like fun. Yeah, he's very tasty. He's good. He's very good. Ron Van Dam likes to treat every listener as someone with whom he is having an intimate, personal relationship. Although no money changes hands, there are fewer sticky bodily fluids, about half as many apologies, and he probably won't have to get rid of your body in the long run. Other than that, it's a pretty standard relationship for Ron. You're listening to The Ron Van Dam Show. You know, one of the nice things about doing this show every weekday, and probably the only nice thing, is that when something happens to me that's embarrassing, I can kind of make it palatable by talking about it. You can do that too, only people won't listen to you. I have that problem sometimes too. <laughs> I do a, a, a television show on Thursdays, and uh, <laughs> this is so embarrassing, I can't believe it. It's on the second floor of a, of a building, of an office building, and I'm going up uh, the stairs. It's a large flight of stairs. I'm going up the stairs, and I'm feeling rather chipper and rather spry. Feeling good, about to do a show, know what I'm going to be talking about, good times. So I'm going up this flight of stairs, and I get a little cocky. My little cock goes a little cocky. And I start uh, moving up the stairs at a pretty good pace, skipping a couple of stairs at a time. Now, I'm very long-legged, so I have the ability to miss a couple of stairs because my legs are long, you know, so I can do like two stairs at a time. And I'm getting cocky about it. I said cocky again. And I reach like the top of the stairs, almost the top of the stairs. I'm a few steps away. And I miscalculate that, and I I trip on one of the stairs going up, and I trip forward, and I catch my balance, but not entirely, and I fall forward at the top of the landing, and uh, my knees hit the carpet, which is obviously a carpet covering up a floor, a dirty floor, and I, I hit the carpet with my knees, and it hurts. And I fall forward onto the ground. And it hurts. And, I, and you know, when you fall down, your first reaction is, all right, I'm going to move a little bit. Let's see if I'm damaged or not. You don't know. You don't know. You don't know. You hurt, but you don't know what might be broken or something like that. Did I break something? Did I, am I bleeding? So uh, I got up, and, uh, and my knees hurt, but not bad, and I could move, and I could walk, and I thought, okay, this is just going to hurt in the morning. And it does just a little bit, but I'm fine. I'm a little scraped up, no worse for wear. I don't know what that phrase means. But the embarrassing part is, oh, my God, I fell up the stairs. <laughs> so I hear stories of people falling down the stairs, which is very dangerous because you can hurt yourself really badly falling down the stairs because gravity will like make you go faster down the stairs and more hurtful. But very infrequently, and not too often, do you hear somebody talking about falling up the stairs. At first sight, and when you first hear that phrase, you say to yourself, that's not possible. How do you fall up something? That Gravity-wise, that makes no sense whatsoever. But I did. I fell up. I don't understand it, but I did. I'm usually a very graceful guy. I am. This doesn't happen to me frequently at all. As a matter of fact, I can count the number of times in my entire lifetime, and I've been around a little while, it's not my first rodeo. I love that phrase. I just have to use it whenever I can. I remember every time I've fallen in my life, it was four times. That's all. 
my entire life of moving around, I've only fallen down or up four times. And no permanent damage from any of them. I survived. So, this is installment number four in my entire lifetime of falling. But it was the first time I ever fell up the stairs. <laughs> and and I, I don't know. I, I, I'm confused by it myself. All right. Uh, our guest is coming up. You're going to find this to be more interesting than anything I've done for the past 20 minutes. There's a thing out on the market called... CBD oil. It's not for your car. It's for you. Apparently, this oil can be ingested or topically applied, and it comes, I think, from hemp, which uh, which is a uh, you know like smoking pot kind of stuff. It's one of the ingredients. So, uh, but I find uh, this is a fascinating interview. Apparently, this CBD oil which you can buy in the United States online. Sounds pretty seedy, but it, I guess it's not. And it actually cures a lot of stuff. Your body feels it takes pain away uh, without doing medication and stuff. And it's I, I had heard about it. I had even done an interview about it uh, like half a year ago. But this is a different doctor who really, uh, I think, is going to explain CBD oil. And, and I've, I've got to try it. I've got to try it. I think you've heard about it. Uh, many people's impression of it is that, uh, oh, can you get high from it? No, you can't. But it's got some amazing properties. Now, all right, I've heard this before. I've heard this before. Well, like jellyfish have some ingredient in them that makes your brain, I don't, you know, I've I've heard about all these these little miracle things that come out of fish. You know this omega three fish oil. It's supposed to keep your joints really uh, moving well, unless you fall up the stairs, <laughs> like I did. <laughs> but you know, fish oil. You know, yeah, whatever. You know, yeah, fine. And I've said this before. I said if a fish oil was such a wonderful thing, then uh, why do fish die after a few hours in my uh, my fishbowl? You know, I, you figure fish would be living like for 2,000 years. If they got fish oil, they are fish. They got the oil. It comes from them. But fish don't look too healthy sometimes. So CBD oil. Yeah. We're going to find out all about it. I think you'll find this extremely interesting. Um and I know it doesn't make sense you'd, you'd hear something extremely interesting on this program, but uh, it can happen, yeah. But first, <laughs> you may be interested in this. Do you know that there is one item that can not only increase your home's beauty, but its value? That would be placemats. Hello, I'm George Karanapikopoulos, owner of George K's Wholesale Placemat Warehouse, your one stop for all your placemat needs. We have a placemat for every room of your house. That's right, placemats are not just for the dining room anymore. Anywhere you might make a spill, or maybe where you eat, like in front of the TV. I do it all the time like you. You want a placemat. We have fancy placemats, like in bamboo or teak. That's right, teak. Nice plastic laminate ones for no stains, even blue. We can custom make you placemats in as little as two weeks. Come to our showroom at the intersection of Route 27 and the Holbrook Turnpike. You're going to like what you see. Your placemat is waiting for you at George K's Wholesale Placemat Warehouse. Hello, Doctor. Hi, how are you? Good. Dr. Rector Patel joins us now. And we're talking about uh, CBD, which is, uh, it's a new uh, couple of initials for people. Um, what exactly is CBD? What does that stand for? Yeah, so it stands for cannabidiol, which is one of the chemicals that's made by the cannabis family of plants, which includes marijuana and hemp. Okay, now a lot of people probably think, that that's a legal way 
uh, federally to, to get you a little bit high. But that's not the case, is it? No, because CBD has no psychoactive effect. It can't get you high. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that works out. But yet, um, <laughs> but yet it does have an incredible effect on the body, I, I hear. Yeah, so it works great for certain um, uh, conditions. It works very well, in fact. Mm-hmm. I would say better than pharmaceutical medications, right? And these conditions include migraines and headaches, muscle pain, nerve pain, anxiety, insomnia, among other conditions. Okay. Now, um, where do we get this? I mean, is it actually available, or do you have to send to some foreign country? No, it's, it is available in the United States. In fact, hemp is grown in the United States, um, and the cultivation of hemp became legal as throughout the United States as of 2018 with the 2018 Farm Bill. So it's available at um, typically online. Is, is where you can purchase it, right? right. Um, but in addition, it can be purchased at health food stores as well as uh, medical marijuana dispensaries if you live in a state mm-hmm. where medical marijuana is either legal for recreational or medical use. Okay. But it doesn't, but in order to achieve it, that, that is, you don't have to have that route necessarily. You can get it over the counter, you say. Yeah, essentially over the counter. Not at your local pharmacy, though. Right. So if you walk into like a Walgreens mm-hmm. or a CVS, you're not, not going to find not it there. Okay. At least not yet. Okay. Um, uh, uh, but but for now, like I said, it's available online um, at medical marijuana dispensaries and at health food stores. Those are the most common places to find it. Okay. What are the various ways that it can be applied? Is it a topical situation? Is it an ingested situation? Uh, how is that done? So those, those two ways are definitely uh, two ways to, to, to uh, administer the uh-huh. CBD topically uh-huh. as well as uh, in the form of an ingestible. But the most common way is what's called sublingually or, or under the tongue, right? So yes. CBD is typically uh, extracted uh, and mixed with a carrier oil. That carrier oil is typically olive oil or coconut oil. Mm-hmm. And so you have a liquid formulation, and then the drops are put under the tongue. And that's the most common way to administer it. Okay. But there are some um, uh, other ways to, to use CBD oil as well, including inhalation. So we're talking about vaporization. Uh, uh, we're talking about uh, uh, rectal formulations and also vaginal uh, formulations as well. Ooh. Okay. Um, is it totally, completely safe for everybody? Um, no. Okay. So if, if you're, a, you know, the people who should really uh, be cautious when taking CBD are especially those people that are on a medication uh-huh. that tends to uh, injure the liver, okay? Uh-huh. So an example that I give you, uh, there's a medication known as valproic acid, otherwise known as valproate, uh-huh. which is commonly used to treat seizures, okay? Right. And so what they found when they did some research is that when CBD is taken in conjunction with this, this particular medication, people's uh, liver enzyme level went up, oh. okay? So in this situation, you know, if, you, if you're on a medication that affects liver and you're taking CBD, your, your, your liver function has to be very closely okay. monitored. Now, wouldn't, wouldn't, okay? any, wouldn't any medication that you take on a daily basis, a prescribed medication, I mean, most people are on cholesterol or uh, some type of cholesterol medication or uh, anxiety or... Uh, high blood pressure. I mean, those are the common ones, uh, and they can affect the liver over time because you have to constantly get that checked to make sure it's not. Is that of a concern? Um. So, so yeah, there's so many medications. Yeah. Um, yeah. There are certain medications where um, I have not found any drug-to-drug interactions yeah. in, in patients who've, who've used these medications with um, CBD oil. Um, let's talk about the, the class of medications uh, that are used for high blood pressure. Right. You know, they're called antihypertensives. Right. I haven't found any issues with that. Uh-huh. In general, um, anti-anxiety medications, uh-huh. so we're talking about like SSRIs. Uh-huh. I haven't found any issues there right. either. Right. Um, so, so you know, certain medications um, uh, you do need to, to, to watch out when okay. for when taking it with CBD, but then other medications, you know, there there are no drug interactions. Okay. So, mm-hmm. yeah. well, uh, doctor, is it is it possible that somebody gets so involved with CBD oil that they overuse it or become 
very dependent on it because of the psychological ramifications where you feel I'm taking CBD oil, I've got to take it all the time because I don't ever want to feel pain anywhere, etc. cetera? Uh, no, typically not because here's what happens, okay? If you overdo it, mm-hmm. you develop a tolerance to it, uh, and it, there comes a point where no matter how much you take, it's uh, just not going to be effective for your pain. Uh, okay. I've actually, in fact, had patients do that where – they had been struggling with pain for so long, yeah. and then all of a sudden, they used a CBD product. It worked so well that yes. they started to overdo it, and they'd call me a couple weeks later, be like, hey, Doc, this isn't working for me anymore, and then we sit down, and we go through, well, okay, how much of it have you been using, yeah. and how often, and then I'd be like, okay, you're kind of overdoing it, <laughs> yeah. so you need to cut back because you developed okay. a tolerance on it. Okay. it. So, so, um, so that's what I would say about uh, overusing it. Now, if you overdose on it, you know, yes. if you take too too high of an amount, yes. then really the most common side effects we're talking about is lethargy, diarrhea, and changes in your appetite and weight. Okay. That's probably the worst of it. Weight up or weight down? <laughs> uh, weight down. Oh, yeah, weight down. Hmm. Huh. <laughs> All right. Now it's probably not proper for me to say that, but wow, could that be a remedy? Uh, no. Okay. Probably uh, not. Probably no. not. Okay. <laughs> See, you're a very special doctor. Thank you very much for doing this. I have a feeling if I went to my uh, internal medicine, whatever you call them, doctor, they would probably say no prescriptions, man. Uh, we're we're pushing prescriptions here. We're not, you know, we're not doing this. Uh, it, c- could that be a typical reaction? Seriously. You know, it it depends a lot on the doctor, yeah. and I think you'd be surprised. A lot of doctors have now patients coming to them being like, look, this yes. is working very effectively yes. for me. Yes. And so then it becomes incumbent on the physician to go out and actually gain knowledge uh-huh. on, on, this, on CBD, right? So there's three really schools of thought. You, you do have the sort of the old school physicians right. who are going to reprimand you for even bringing up mm-hmm. CBD oil, okay? And then you have the physicians who are basically like, look, what you do on your time is none of my business. And then you have the physicians who are like, I'm totally in support of you using the CBD oil. You know, if it works, great. You know, continue to use it. However, um, uh, you know, in any sort of official capacity, I cannot endorse your use of CBD oil because I work for a system that does not allow for it. Yes, yes. You know? Okay. Um, And so, you know, in a lot of states, there are independent practitioners like myself that specifically specialize in the area of, yes. of cannabis, um, who are well-informed um, and, and have a lot of experience treating patients. Okay. Uh, our, our conversation could go on. I could talk to you for hours, to be honest with you, because this is so much information. But our time is short. Uh, the, it, we can even get into recipes and desserts and things like that. I mean, uh, there's a lot to talk about. So where do we go to, to find out about this world now that's opened up? I would say start with my book, The CBD Oil Solution, um, and that's available on Amazon or anywhere books are sold. Mm -hmm. That's a good foundation. And then you can build on that by going to my YouTube channel, which you can find by just Googling The CBD Oil Expert plus YouTube. And finally, if you want questions answered, go to my Facebook group, which you can go to by going to facebook.com backslash groups backslash ask the CBD expert. And that will give you, you know, probably more than enough information on on CBD. Hey, thanks for what you do. It's very informative. Appreciate that. It's uh, the CBD oil uh, solution. You can Google her and find her everywhere. And uh, the CBD expert, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Take care. Bye-bye. Well, there you go. Everything you wanted to know about it, you've now pretty much do know. It's time for me to step to the side so that you can move forward. And uh, this has been great, great. This has just been great. Thank you so much. Thank you. There's a little prize, a little gift uh, at the door before you leave. Enjoy it. That's from me to you. I'll be here the next time a weekday rolls around. Please join me then at your leisure. Until then... I wish you peace.